again, my little yarnivores and spiderettes. Fiber Spider back again with another tutorial just for you. So today we are going to be making a really easy, super squishy, and oh so toasty ribbed hat. Yep, once you're done with the increasing, it's just a one round repeat. Very, very simple. Now for this particular hat, I used Red Heart Super Saver Ombre in the colorway of Coco. And for those of you that are not familiar, it is 482 yards, a weight of four, 100% acrylic. Now, after finishing this hat with, by the way, I might add a six millimeter size J crochet hook. After finishing this hat, I did have some yarn left over, although I'm a little bit doubtful as to whether or not I would have enough for a second hat in this style. Whenever you have a, a a textured stitch, it eats yarn. It's just the nature of the beast. And uh, so for today's example, I'm going to be using the same yarn, just a, a lovely blue ombre colorway. And uh, yeah, so without further ado, let's get started. Round one. All right, so... Like with so many projects, going to start off with a slip knot and a chaining of four. One, two, three, four. And then slip stitch to that first chain to create a ring. And we're going to work within that ring. And of course, if you would rather prefer to do the, the magic ring method, more power to you. This is just the preferred method that I use. So from here, going to start by chaining up two, and that is not going to count as our first stitch. It's just to give us the height that we need. So right now, into this center ring, going to be creating 12 double crochets. Now, this is going to be for an adult-sized hat. Fits me beautifully. Now, of course, if you want to make this bigger or smaller, you totally can. All you would need to do is just change the number of initial double crochets that you start off with. You know, me, I start off with 12. With a lot of the the hat projects that I do. So I already have four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. All right, and yeah, I am going to double count because that's what I do. Now, be sure not to include this first chaining up of two. So we've got two, four, six, eight, ten, and twelve. Perfect. Then to finish up round one, going to do a slip stitch in the top of this first double crochet. So not in here, but into here. Gonna slip stitch. And that is gonna be the end of round one. Now, as far as the, the difference uh, if you wanted to change sizes, uh, you know, a, a bigger adult size or perhaps a small child size, I would say play around with the, the number of initial double crochets. Of course, also later on when we're doing our increasing, you could stop increasing or continue increasing as the case may be. Play around with it. It's a very versatile pattern. So... Without further ado, let's get on to round two. Okay, so round two, we're gonna start doing some increasing. 
very, very simple. Start off by chaining up two. Again, that does not count as an actual stitch. This is the chain two that we have directly below it. So around this first double crochet, front post, double crochet around the post. So yarning over, going around the post, grabbing the yarn, pulling it through, pull through two and pull through two. So it gives us a nice raised stitch. And then as far as the increase is concerned, going to stitch in between the stitches in this space right here. And we're going to do this all the way around, just in between the stitches for the increase. Next post, the stitch right here, another front post double crochet. So around the post. And so we have a front post. Then double in between the stitches. And then front post around the next stitch. And then stitch in between the stitches. So we started off with initially 12 stitches. By the end of this round, we are going to have 24. We are doubling our count. And every increase around, we're going to be adding an additional 12 stitches until we get to a total of 72 stitches. And the, the increase is going to be slow and steady, and it's not going to be very dramatic, and it will fit the crown of a head beautifully, which is one of the things that I really like about this, as opposed to creating a, a, a tube of ribbing and then sort of cinching it at the top. I, uh, those hats drive me crazy. I try to avoid that kind of a pattern if possible because the, uh, the top, it's, it's very, it's very floopy, floopy and flappy. And for a slouchy hat, that's perfect. But if you want something that's more form fitting, this is, I think, the route to go. And we are almost there, actually. So it's very, very simple, just front post and then a stitch in between the stitches. Very, very simple. And then two more stitches, if I'm not mistaken. And it really does pay to double count your stitches at the end of the round, at least initially when you're doing your increasing and so forth. So let's, let's check it out. All right, so this chaining of two, again, does not count. So we've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. Awesome sauce. All right, so I'm going to, again, slip stitch into the top of this first double, the one that we did a front post on. So slip stitch right in there. And there you go. That's the end of round two. All right, so for round three, start off by chaining up two. And for this increase round, around each of these front post stitches that we have, we're going to be doing two front post stitches around that stitch. Okay, so front post around the front post, and then another one. And you're gonna to wanna to do this a little bit loose so that it's easier to work 
with later. So it's just two front posts around the front post. And then when you reach your regular double crochet, the one that we tucked in between, back post that stitch. So instead of going around the front, we're going to be going around the back. So after yarning over, going around the back and around that post, grabbing the yarn through two and through two. So instead of creating a, a front ridge, it creates a sort of horizontal bar, and that's going to create our texture. So around the next front post, two front post double crochets. And then back post around the solitary one here. And then two front posts. And then a back post. And two front posts. and so forth for the rest of the round. So I'm going to keep going off camera, and I will meet back up with you when I am about to finish up the round and show you how to finish, you know, touch base with you. But really, that's all there is to it. So it's two front posts around the front post, and then a back post, two front posts, back post, two front posts, a back post, etc, etc. So I'll meet back up with you around here, and I shall see you in a bit. Okay, so I'm almost done with round three. I just have a couple more stitches to do. So I just did my back post, so that means I need to do two front posts and a back post, and then our slip stitch. So two front posts. Come on, thank you. All right, so I got the two front posts, then a back post. There we go. And then to the top of that first pairing, that front post there, uh, do a slip stitch right in. And at the end of this round, you should have a total of 36 both front and back post, you know, in combination, um, 36 double crochet stitches. All right, so let's move on. Round four. All right, so again, start off by chaining up two. Now the increases are going to be happening in between these pairings of front post double crochets. And that that is the increase element for this round. So going to front post around the front post, like so. And then in between these front posts, create a new stitch in between, just like we did couple rows back, and then front post around the front post, and then that back post, do a back post. So whenever you see a front post, do a front post. Whenever you see a back post, do a back post. And in between the front posts, create a stitch. So back post around that back post, then front post, double front post. Front post, double in between, 
and front post. And I got caught on the plies. Excuse me. Got to do this front post. There we go. And then back post around the back post. And then front post, double in between front post. So front post, double in between the stitches, front post, and back post. Do this once more. Front post around the front post. Double in between. Front post around the front post. And back post around the back post. So yes, I'm going to continue on off camera and I will meet back up with you right around here. Touch base and we shall proceed. All right, I'll see you in a bit. Okie dokie, so I'm almost done with round four. I just need to do a front post, double in between, front post and back post. And at the end of round four, you should have a total of 48 stitches. And it certainly does not hurt to double count. So in between those stitches, so the front post in between, and then another front post. And then a back post. And then of course, as per usual, going to finish up the round with a slip stitch to the first of our double crochets, this front post here. There we are. And there you have it. Okie dokie. Round five. Okay, so start off by chaining up two. And we're going to increase this first front post with two front post stitches around that front post. So I got front post and another front post. Next stitch, that solitary one, back post. Okay, now this next front post, see all around we have pairs of front post double crochet stitches. For this round, you're only increasing the one on the right, okay? Leave this guy alone. You don't want to increase both of them, otherwise this hat will grow huge in no time. Now we want a, like I said, a slow, gradual increase. So it's the, the first of the two we increase. The second one, we just do a regular front post double crochet stitch. No increasing for you. Mm -mm, no cookie for you. And then the next stitch, back post. So the repeat for this round is two front posts, back post, front post, back post. And so we have another grouping here. So it'll be two, then one, one, one. You know, that way we will have a, a steady growth of increase. So it's the first one. So we have two front posts around the front post. Then a back, front, back. So back post, 
front post, back post. Okay, then we have another grouping here. So it's two, one, one, one. So two front post, and then a back, front, back. So back post. Okay, gotta fix that. I missed one of my plies. So back. Front and back. Okay, two uh, two front posts, back, front, back. Okay, so I've got my two fronts, then a back front and a back. Back. Front and back. There we go. So I'm going to continue on as I as I do um, until I reach about here or so and I will meet back up with you to finish the round. All right, I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so almost done with round five. I just like to touch base, you know. So we have our last pairing of front posts. So around that first one, two front post stitches, and then a, a back, a front, and a back. So we've got the two front posts, then a back post, and a front, and a back. And then, as per usual, going to slip stitch into the top of this first front post double. And at the end of this round, your count of stitches should be a total of 60, uh, you know, regardless of whether they are front or back post stitches. Yes, you should have 60 because this is the fifth round. 12 times 5 is 60. It's a, you know, nice, easy way of remembering. So, let us proceed to round six. Okay, so round six. This is actually going to be the last of the increase rounds for the adult sized hat. Um, so I'm going to start by chaining up two and then front post around this front post. And in between our small pairing here, double crochet in between the front post stitches. And that is our increase. Then front post around the front post. Back post around the back post, etc., etc. Front post around the front post, and back post around the back post. So you're just following suit with what already is pre existing, which I rather like. And then for our next grouping here front post around the front post, the first one. and then double crochet in between that pair of front posts 
almost had it. I get an A for effort, but an F for execution. Okay, so front post around the front post, double in between the front posts, and then front post around the front post, and then just follow suit with what the stitch is. Back post around the back post, front post around the front post, and back post around the back post, like so. We'll do this once again. Front post around the front post, double crochet in between the stitches, and then front post around the front post, back post around the back post, front post around the front post, and back post around the back post. There. So, as per usual, going to work my way around until about here, and I will touch base with you. All right, I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so almost done with round six, and I have my two front posts here, so let's get to it. Front post around the front post, double in between, front post around the front post, and then back post. front post, and back post. Ta-da! Okay, so then, to finish up the round, simply slip stitch into that first front post that we did, and that is, I mean, that's really how you finish up every round. Uh, and that is it as far as the increasing goes. Now, I had actually tried to see, you know, uh, you know, about making this bigger perhaps. And what I opted to do to make it easy, uh, you know, to remember where to do your increasing. If you want to do another set of increasing, what I did was... I chained up two and did a front post, back post, front post, back post. Now it's this one here is the one, the, the front post that I decided to do two front posts around, okay? And then back post, front post, back post, front post, back post, and then another two front posts around there because that way, it wouldn't seem as if all of the, the branching is happening to the right, but also to the, the left as well. Sort of evens things up a little bit. That is, of course, if you want to keep increasing at that rate. And then after doing you know, a round with two front posts uh, around this one, the following round, you would then do a double crochet in between that pairing, and then eventually that stitch would become a back post double crochet stitch, just like we did, you know, in, in succession here. Just to give you an idea, if you want to continue to make this piece even bigger. Me, personally, I have no problems wearing the hat. That is also because I have really no hair to speak of. Um, if you do not want to compress uh, your your hairdo too much, um, then you might want to go up a size. Now, keep in mind, if you do that, you will be increasing uh, the the circumference of your hat by a total of 24 stitches. Just something to keep in mind, um, because every increase round 
is 12 stitches uh, that you're increasing. Right now we have a total of 72. If you kept going, um, you know, uh, adding another 24 stitches, that very well mean, may be a little bit too big for you, but I like to give you options. All right. Now, if you want to go for a, a smaller child size, perhaps omit um, this second increasing that we did here um, and just leave off with the initial increasing. It would be a fairly small hat, though, for a rather small child, but I like to give you options. That's what I do. So that being said, I'm going to do one more round uh, just, you know, to, uh, you know, flesh things out in, in their entirety. And there you go. Round seven. Now, round seven is essentially it is the one round that you will continue to do for the rest of your project. You would chain up two. And then whenever you see a, a front post, do a front post around it. And then the next stitch, back post. And then front post around the front post. And back post around the next. It's just a, a one by one ribbing, as they call it. Front post around the front. Back post around the back, front post around the front, and back post around the next, and so on and so forth. It's really as easy as that. You know, once the initial increasing is done, you can totally go on autopilot for the rest of your hat, like so. And then when you have come full circle, you would front post around the front, back post around the back, and then finish by slip stitching to that first front post and continue on by chaining up two front around the front, back around the back, front around the front, back around the back, etc., etc. Now, for the hat that I had made, I will show you. Okay, so. Right here is where we did our, our last increasing. You know, we had the one down here. And then we had the one above it. So this is the, the last of the, the increasing that we did. So if you count the, the back post sort of ribs in between, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen of these sort of horizontal ribs. So you know, what you would do is for about 13 more rounds, give or take, you know, it's totally up to you, about 13 more rounds, just keep on going in the same fashion, doing a one by one ribbing, and you are good to go. Now, what you could do if you want to sort of adjust the, the bottom here and, you know, tweak it a little bit, what you could do is uh, for a couple of rounds, say about three rounds before you're ready to finish, what you could do is instead of continuing on in the same fashion of doing a, a front post around the front post and a back post around the back post, you could swap that out. And what I mean by that is instead of doing a, a front post around the front post, you would do a back post around the front post. 
and a front post around the back post so that it would still be ribbed, but it would be offset and you would have a more defined rib at the bottom. Now, I did try the look of that. Honestly, I wasn't a huge fan. I thought it was a little off-putting, um, but it is something that you could do. Another option also is for the last you know, three rounds or so, you could change out your hook size to a size or two smaller to bring the, the bottom edge you know, closer to your head, uh, sort of cinch it in just a little bit. Again, honestly, I didn't think that was necessary either because the whole thing is very stretchy and squishy. Um, totally subjective, totally up to you. And of course, as always, the, the timestamps will be in the description box as per usual. If you want to skip ahead, that's totally fine. So there you go. That is a very simple ribbed crochet hat, and I hope that you guys liked this video. If you did, please give a little thumbs up button down below, because you know that I appreciate your appreciation as always. And you know what to do, right? Until next time, I want all of you to stay inspired, stay caffeinated, stay stitching, stay nice and toasty woasty, and what better way to do that with a new, a new hat? <laughs> stay safe, Take care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you in my next video. You have a great day, everybody, and bye for now.